when it comes to training for cultural heritage protection, life training for cultural heritage protection, exercises that can be staged and can be used in a preparedness phase to make sure that everything you have in place for protecting your cultural heritage functions whenever it is necessary. You remember the disaster management cycle, which aims at bringing the preparation always to higher, 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 higher level, the more often you run through it. The incident in this cycle can be a real incident, a real catastrophe that happens to your cultural heritage, or it can be one that is staged within an exercise where you can also try out your preparation, your preparedness measures, where you can learn and see what's not functioning and then adapt it so that in the crisis where you really need it, your response can be as best as possible. So we're talking very much here again about the preparedness phase. And we have a long and outstanding expertise at our Center for Cultural Property Protection in Krems regarding life exercises, life training, together with the cultural side and emergency first responders. Who might be able to help you respecting and protecting your cultural heritage during an emergency will definitely depend on each country, on the legal situation there, if the army can help you, if it's the fire brigades, if it's civil protection, if maybe even volunteers can be recruited to help. So definitely do check regarding the legal situation in your specific countries. For the exercises we've done, at CREMS, we've developed what we call a cultural heritage rescue team as a prototype um, that can be deployed, a prototype of experts that can be deployed when it comes to recovery of cultural heritage. In this team, we did bring together experts from different cultural institutions, different um, background material handling, statics, um, uh, but also from emergency response units. And the idea of this cultural heritage rescue team is that you have a team that's working together, training together, um, and preparing together, also with cultural institutions, of course, before an emergency strikes. The idea is that this cultural heritage rescue team is able to protect and recover cultural property during and immediately after a calamitous event. And for that, it's important and necessary that the members of this team are able to connect emergency responders that might be called in to help for that situation, to help and assist in cultural heritage protection with the cultural heritage specialist on the other hand. Because these are usually two entities that do not on a day-to-day -day basis cooperate and work together and train for cultural heritage protection because they have two completely distinct and separate um, day to day, uh, businesses, um, what they're dealing with in their everyday lives and work. So this team is kind of a connector, which means that the team members need to know how both sides work, emergency response and cultural heritage side. They need to know the needs of both sides and there is the need of joint training and exercises. We've kept the idea of this cultural heritage rescue team, uh, very simple. There's a prototype structure which features a lead, a deputy, which can also be a liaison officer, and then experts. Experts depending on whatever uh, cultural heritage is in question. Logistics is always a good um, idea to have on board. Conservators, material handling, maybe art historians, inventorization specialists, structural engineers. When it comes to statics, think of an earthquake, for example and the data informatics experts guarding also databases. And it comes to inventorization, for example, what has already been um, recovered. And very important is to have a reach back organization, someone you can call outside the area of the catastrophic event that can give you more input on certain um, objects, for example, but also can assist you with whatever is necessary um, from the back, uh, have your back, um, give you further information and support you from your, um, let's say, home base. The capabilities and capacities of such a cultural heritage rescue team should at least include, when it comes to capabilities, security, management, coordination, documentation, logistics, 
to decide, plan and lead, to teach and train. And regarding capacities, we have situation assessment, cultural heritage assessment, decision making and action plans. If we think about such teams and setting up such teams, they obviously need equipment. Starting with personal equipment, this would be boots with steel toes and steel shanks, helmets with integrated light or head torch, gloves, waterproof jacket, preferably high visibility, an identifiable vest with team name, preferably high visibility, an ID card. It will be possibly a stressful, catastrophic situation. And it's necessary to know who is going in and out of your museum, for example. Not everyone will be allowed in there. So the ID card is a very important thing. First aid kit, eye protection, ear protection, face mask, a harness, possibly, backpack, knives and pliers, whistle, rescue beacon. Always depending, of course, what scenario we are talking about. Basic equipment of the team itself, and technical equipment, and team equipment. Technical equipment could be boxes and storage equipment, packaging and protective system, packing materials for damaged items, labels for labeling what you're recovering, emergency inventory forms, basic hand tools, a vehicle, lights and torches in addition to the um, personal equipment, restoration equipment, the question mark, are they are there restorators in there who can do an ad hoc, very spontaneous first civilization? Cameras, generators, a team equipment might include communication means, walkie-talkies, radio, basic office materials, notebooks, pen, paper, ruler, color chart, measuring tape, highlighter, scissors, adhesive tape. But also maps and plans that need to be there on request. They need to know where they're going, where they're supposed to go on your premises, tablets and laptop, camera, ropes. That's the very basic version that we developed for our exercises. If you want to go into really much more detail, do check out the Protecting Cultural Heritage from the Consequences of Disaster publication, ProCulture, another European Union project in which um, then substantial publication, um, you find a lot more of details. Um, so we've added this to the um, additional reading material. And now we show you some pictures from the exercises that we've staged, um, testing and trialing our cultural heritage protection teams. In one of the large scale exercises that we've done at the Center for Cultural Property Protection in Krems. You see a statue being packed for recovery, inventory of heritage items that were already salvaged, and then bringing them into a storage room, a storage system outside the immediate, immediately affected area where the items are stored for being further processed. That's how we very basically and very easily structured a first um, prototype of cultural heritage rescue teams. If you want to build something up like that for your institution, either be in contact with us directly or think along the lines of the ideas that we are giving you in this module, what's upcoming and following is going to fit together nicely so that you can bit, bits, pick bits and pieces you need for developing whatever you deem suitable for your cultural heritage institution.